So as you look back at the great francophone goalies of the 1960s and 1970s, this guy is high on the list because not only a gentleman on and off the ice, probably one of the most respected and uh, one of the biggest role models for goalies of his era. Everybody wanted to play like him. Everybody wanted to emulate his great success because he played with possibly the third most popular team in NHL history. And uh, when he did well for uh, the Boston Bruins, uh, all of Canada cheered him on, not only Quebec, but, you know, he was a guy that was predicted that was going to beat Mon finally beat Montreal in the playoffs. And he came within one overtime of doing that in 1979. So we're going to talk about the, the great career and the great legacy of Jules Joubert. Now, Jules Joubert, born March 31st, 1949, uh, in Saint-Esprit, Quebec, uh, was drafted in the third round of the 69 NHL Amateur Draft from the great London Knights. Now, he first came to major prominence with his great uh, skating and uh, puck-stopping skills in the 1961 Quebec International uh, Pee Wee Hockey Tournament with the junior version of the Quebec Aces. Now, he first played uh, his major junior with the Tree Rivers Reds in the QJHL with a 23-18-2 record in 67. He also played for Tetford Mines that year in the Memorial Cup and was back with the Reds at the QJHL before graduating to the London Knights in 69, where that was his draft uh, year. Played 37 games for the Knights that year in a very uh, offensive-minded association uh, with a 4.55 uh, average. Now, he was sent to the Iowa Stars of the CHL for seasoning in 1970 with a 17-16-5 record before playing his first game with Minnesota uh, later on in the campaign, 71 is rookie year with Minnesota in a very crowded cage, 5-9-2 with a 3.80 average in 17 games. 72, again, another developmental year. Uh, he played with the Barons of Cleveland with a 25-5 and record in 41 games, four games with Minnesota, 1-2-1. One, and one. So we're always thinking where he's going to find his chance to, to break through. Minnesota gave him one last shot in 73, he played 22 games with a, a very strong 3.05 record and a 10-10-2 uh, regular season uh, campaign. Now, he's part of NHL history in a number of ways, ladies and gentlemen. He was also in the net for the, the Stars when he surrendered John Beliveau's 500 career goal on February 11, 1971. So for many Montreal fans, he, uh, you know, a young Quebecois goalie giving up the goal of Jean Beliveau, not negative with that. It would be a part of his uh, legacy in Quebec from there because it was a lot of people thought it was kind of appropriate. Belleville would score against a francophone goalie. Now, in 74, in one of the biggest trades for the Bruins in the 1970s, he was traded to the uh, Boston as a replacement for Gary Cheevers, who had gone to the WHA. Uh, he, that year, he played in the NHL All-Star game, helped Boston get all the way in, uh, to the finals. Now, this was his first technically full season so it would be considered not say rookie because he had put more than the 25 games in in previous combined seasons uh that year 34 12 and 8 record in 54 games 2.95 average and 10 wins in 16 playoff games he helped boston to come within two games in the stanley cup championship over the flyers 75 23 17 11 record 76, 33, 8, and 10. But when Cheevers returned, he got less playing time. 77, 18, 3, and 3. 78, 15, 6, and 2 in 25 games. 79, 12, 8, and 2 in the regular season. Now, this is where it, uh, it comes in. He uh, was given the, the starting uh, spot in Game 7 against Montreal in the Stanley Cup semifinals. The Boston was going to win. They were pretty well sure to go in the Stanley Cup that year. Montreal was going for a fourth uh, uh, straight. Unfortunately, Guy Lafleur, a feed from Jacques Lemaire, uh, scored a power play goal on a, that famous too many men uh, penalty against Boston. Then Lambert scored the uh, game winner in overtime. Now, uh, Guy Gilbert was named the game's first star despite the loss. Now, uh, the reason why he was given a start, Cheevers was benched. After losing the first two games of the series, and Gilbert took over as a starter thereafter, winning three of the next five games, but uh, not being enough. He was named uh, uh, the game's first three stars in the, the five games against he played against Montreal. Uh, Montreal's Steve Shutt, and great praise for Gilbert, called his performances 
He was standing on his head. He was the, he was the reason he got, got to the seventh game. Now, Gilbert also made NHL history uh, when he was playing with Detroit on February 11, 1982, when the Canucks became the first team with two successful penalty shots in the same game, as Thomas Grady and Ivan Alinka scored for the Canucks in the third period of an eventual 4-4 tie. Now, there's a YouTube of this out there somewhere, but Gilbert, uh, you know, was never good on uh, on breakaway penalty shots, so no big deal. What was kind of bizarre, ladies and gentlemen, he finished his career pretty well in the minors with Anne Ronda playing three games. Uh, but uh, bad records with uh, Detroit over three seasons. He only won 21 games while uh, losing uh, for, uh, 48. So take it as you will. Final NHL totals, 192 uh, wins, 143 losses, 60 ties, with a 3.27 average, 17-15 in the playoffs, 18 regular season shutouts. He was big season, of course, 74, he had 6, and 3 shutouts in the playoffs, 76, he had 2, and they're, uh, they're almost, uh, you know, uh, Stanley Cup uh, run. So, uh, And uh, ladies and gentlemen, just as a reminder, he currently resides in Quebec City, so if you see him around, just tell him basically that, you know, he uh, he uh, made hockey history. And, you know, as one of the most recognizable facers of, uh, of Quebec uh, professional hockey in the 1970s, he was probably the most popular non-Montreal Canadian in Quebec during the era. And that's saying a lot. I don't think Bossy was as popular as Jojo Bear because Bossy cut the throat of Montreal many times over the years. Have a good day. Bye.